Where do you go when you want to escape into nature? For many in Taiwan, one of the top places for getting away from it all is Shito in Nanto County. Shito has an experimental forest owned by National Taiwan University. It's an idyllic nature retreat, but a tremendous amount of work goes into maintaining its beauty. Today in our Sunday special report, we meet the people who are fighting the elements to preserve the Shito forest. They're slowly repopulating the forest with native species to lay the groundwork for Taiwan's future seed by seed. It's the start of spring, and here at Nanto County's Shito Conservation Area, 1,000 meters above sea level, a group of young people has gathered to experience tree climbing. Excitement fills the air. Following the guide's instructions, the young climbers use their body weight to pull themselves up on the ropes. They bend and extend their backs over and over until they reach the top of the tree, where they have a bird's eye view of the local ecology. These two Taiwan incense cedar trees are 30 meters tall and roughly 100 years old. Look up and there's a massive canopy and a rich diversity of creatures that live within it. I found a souvenir just now, a caterpillar. It followed me on the way down the tree. I found the climb to be very interesting and enjoyed how it let me get so close to nature. In this large tree, one can find caterpillars, birds' nest fern, lichen, moss, and other flora and fauna. It's a virtual microcosm teeming with life. In fact, some scholars believe that the tree canopy is an independent ecosystem. It has its own source of nutrients. Due to the presence of these nutrients, epiphytes and other living creatures make their home there. This includes insects, birds, and other creatures. A single tree contains a multitude of life, but the beauty of this forest in Shito belies a hidden crisis. This tree just after six in the morning, arborist Ding Zong Su takes us into the woods. Half of the man-made trees planted here are Japanese cedar. The forest is teeming with life, but it's also under attack from squirrels. The squirrels won't eat the bark of the native Taiwania tree. Perhaps due to evolution, the bark of the Taiwania tree contains compounds that cause the squirrel to spit it out. It knows that this tree isn't delicious, but the Japanese cedar doesn't have such protections. Shito is located in Nanto's Lugu Township. Along with the county's Trailey and Xingyi Townships, it forms the NTU's experimental forest area. One problem that threatens the forest is the poor survivability of non-native trees. Another problem, which is faced by forests nationwide, is landslides. Every landslide wipes out part of the forest's ecology, destroying its habitats. Taiwan is a truly special treasure of an island, but it is also an island fraught with calamity. Taiwan was initially under the ocean, but was brought to the surface by the Earth's crust when two plates converged. When it emerged, it was with great speed and the geography was unstable. We are number one or two in the world for rainfall. So when natural disasters take place, landslides and liquefaction are very common occurrences. Fighting the twin challenges of fragile geography and the fragility of imported trees, NTU works hard to protect its experimental forest. It strives to prevent deforestation, which further weakens the soil and exacerbates the risk of landslides.
roughly 16 percent of the experimental forest area, around 6,000 plots of land, is rented out for farming and forestry activities. NTU has little control over what is done to the trees on those plots. To harvest wood, you need to let the tree grow for 30, 40 or even 50 years. During that time, timber harvesters would have no income. Of course, they would need to grow other things to make a living. For economic survival, people often cut down trees so that they can use the land to grow cabbage, tea or other cash crops. But experts say there's a way to balance forest conservation with economic gain. Here in this corner of Chito, a worker harvests mushrooms that grow on the side of logs. These mushrooms are a win-win solution for farmers and a part of the under-forest economy. The so-called under-forest economy is that which takes advantage of the forest's unique environment to grow byproducts of that environment. The mushrooms we saw today growing on the sides of logs are an example of a forest byproduct. Growing shiitake and lingji mushrooms, rearing chickens, beekeeping, these are all examples of economic activity that NTU is promoting in its experimental forests. We're working with different combinations of trees and fungi, and we're growing mushrooms in different parts of the forest. We want to find the best combination for mushroom farming. The goal is to give timber harvesters something to harvest while they're waiting for trees to grow. Aside from saving the trees and finding new ways for farmers to make money, NTU also wants to enhance the diversity of its experimental forest. Its goal is to plant more indigenous tree species. In the palm of his hand is something smaller than a sesame seed. This arborist is holding the seed of a Formosan cypress. From a small seed, it can grow into a massive tree that takes several people joining the hands to encircle. In this nursery, tens of thousands of saplings of indigenous trees are being grown. When they are ready to be transplanted, they will be placed in areas where they will protect the soil and prevent landslides. They'll replace poorly growing imported trees. We are growing various indigenous conifers like the Taiwan cypress, the Formosan China fair, the Taiwania, the Taiwan ensign cedar, and a small number of Kima Siparis taiwanensis. These are Taiwan's five indigenous conifers, and they are all very valuable. NTU aims to plant 25 hectares of forest annually. This means it will need about 60,000 saplings every year, but the saplings of indigenous conifers grow relatively slowly. For example, this Formosan cypress is two years old, and it's still too small to be transplanted outside the nursery. Slow growth means that more time and resources have to be invested in reforestation. For NTU, cost is one of its biggest challenges. We have to raise these funds ourselves. For example, say that we wanted to take back rented land. That would cost us 10 million NT annually. After taking back the land, we have to plant trees on it. We have to come up with all that money ourselves. NTU says it's expensive to take back rented land and repopulate it with trees. One bank is helping out, not only with funding, but with manpower too. They've come here today to help NTU plant trees in this area that was hit by landslides. <laughs> There's a saying that goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time to plant a tree is right now. I'm aware that the NTU team hopes to plant more trees, so we are working with them on this project called 10 years to grow a tree, 100 years to train a man. We hope to grow 100,000 indigenous trees over the next 10 years. It's not just schools that care about sustainable development. We've discovered that lots of corporations want to take action in support. They might personally take action by coming out to plant trees and help make the world we live in a better place. Here at the base of Jade Mountain, a Bunon man in Xingyi Township is planting a native crop. There were once many indigenous grains growing in Xingyi. 
But amid a dwindling population and changes in the local diet, these local grains have become endangered. <laughs> There's only one person planting it. I'm the only one left planting this variety of seedling. In the 1970s, American researchers hoping to preserve a variety of crops came to Xingyi and collected 28 types of grain to bring back to a seed bank in the U.S. Now, more than 30 years later, researchers at NTU want to bring those grains back to Xingyi. But restoring these grains is a costly venture that involves renting and managing land. Stepping up to help, the bank provided the funding needed to bring all 28 grains back to their native land. The project will help protect the diversity of crop genetics as well as future food security. To give an example, have you ever eaten American grapefruit? It's modified. All of them are the same now, and each one is similarly sweet. However, if the plant encounters a disease, it's finished. Diversity in living things means that each variety has a different aptitude. Each has different genes. That's very important. The return of native grains to their original land enriches the gene pool of crop species and helps perpetuate an intangible food culture. I'm very happy to know that after these grains are restored, young people can start growing them again. Preserving native plant species will ensure the protection of Taiwan's environment, its culture and its food security. It's an expensive venture, but letting them disappear would come at an even greater cost.